Okay, so uh, yesterday we started with radical equations, and I said big key is square roots undo squares, and squares undo square roots. That's the big key. Square roots undo squares, and squares undo square roots. And we looked at a problem here that was really more of the aspect of getting us used to taking the square root of both sides. We dealt with gravity and, and such, and and a bowling ball going off the cliff, and we did a little bit of practice with the units as well, and that's what I wanted to make sure that we understood going through that. All right, so, but down to the nitty-gritty, how do you solve radical equations? So to solve radical equations. And this is the same thing we would have learned in pre-algebra. First off, isolate the radical. Isolate the radical. Square both sides. Because squares undo square roots. And how would you finish? Isolate the variable. Right. Oh, this should be red. Just got to remember to isolate your radical first. Then you square both sides. And then it's like a normal equation. You know how to finish it by isolating the variable. All right, so let's look at a few of them. So on number two here, or number two A, so you see the radical, right? It's right here. We need to get it by itself. What's in its way? The seven, right? So what do we do? Add a negative seven to both sides, right? We've done this before. Now I have negative the square root of n minus 4 equals 8. Make sense? Do we have the radical isolated? We do. Isn't the radical by itself? The radical is by itself, right? The n minus 4 is the radicand. So the radical is by itself. We are now ready to square both sides. Square both sides. Okay, remember, squares undo square roots. The answer is the radicand. N minus 4 is the left, and hopefully we all think 64 is the right. And look, at this point in our math, we should be able to move that negative 4 in our head, right? And say the answer is N equals 68. And there we are on that one. So the second one, here's our radical. Right. We got two things messing it up. We got a 3 messing it up and a negative 12. And look, I have no idea what to move first, but I know in a regular equation, when things are both added to and multiplied times a variable, I'll always move things added first. So what do you think I'm going to move first? Things added, right? Same thing. So let's move the negative 12. We're going to add a positive 12 to both sides. And again... You should be at the point where you can do this in your head. Hopefully you think now the right is a 9, right? Positive 12 and negative 3 is 9. We still have 3 times the square root of 2x plus 5. How are you going to move the 3? Divide both sides by 3. And again, look. What happens when you divide the right by 3? What do you get? 3. All right. So I divide it both sides by 3. Because again, we're further down the road. Right toward the end of Algebra 1, we should be able to do some of this stuff in our head. All right, now we're ready to do what? Square both sides. We've isolated the variable. But you can't square both sides until you isolate the radical. So here's where we end up on this one. 2x plus 5 equals 9, right? Because 3 squared is 9. What would you move now? Right? So now we have 2x equals what? 4. And then we're going to move the 2, and we end up with x equals 2, right? Because we divide it to 4 by 2, right? And we got x equal 2. Not too bad. 
Not too bad. Look, this is all stuff we know how to do. We just got to isolate the radical square both sides. The only difference is isolating the radical square both sides and then continue on doing stuff we know how to do. And again, <laughs> isolating the radical is stuff we know how to do anyhow. So we just got to remember, isolate the radical before you square both sides. All right, so C, oh no, the radical's on the right. Surely I would have no idea what to do. And by the way, you might have to add radicals up. That's okay. You can do that, right? We know how to add radicals. If the radicands are the same, you just add them up. Add the coefficients. What if you had radicals on both sides? <gasps> oh, my. What would I do? Move all the radicals to one side, right? Just like you'd move all the variables to one side by adding their opposite. Don't we know how to do that stuff already? We do. All the variations we know how to handle. All right. So, again, I'm going to move the 12, right? I'm going to add a negative 12 to both sides. So now I'm at negative 20 equals my negative 5 times the square root of 3n plus 2. And when I move the negative 5, what does the left become? 4, right? Because, again, I'm doing a negative 20 divided by negative 5. If you can't do it in your head, write the steps out. But, again, we should be at the point where we could do this stuff in our head. So you should have 4 equals the square root of 3n plus 2. All right, finish it off. I'm going to finish it. You finish it. Did you finish it? Hopefully you add a negative 2 to both sides, and then hopefully you divide both sides by 3. Voila! You are there. All right? Is that right? Is that right? What? Don't you know the response when somebody says, is that right? You're supposed to say, is that right? Oh. You don't know that? What, do you live in a shoe? Yes. All right. Okay. Everybody good? 14 toids? All right. Let me uh, remind you of one thing. No... Once the radical is isolated, if the other side is negative, there will be no real number solution. There will be no real number solution. First example. Would you agree we'd move the 15 by adding a negative 15 to both sides? When we do, we get the square root of n equals negative 6. When you take the square root of something, can you end up, of a positive number, can you end up with a negative? And the answer is no. You can't um, take the square root of something to end up at negative 6. And remember, we can't take the square root of negative numbers because that's an imaginary number. What's the square root of 36? 6. All right? It's not negative 6. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of negative 36 isn't even negative 6. Because what's negative 6 times negative 6? Positive 36 doesn't get you to negative 36. So there's no solution. It doesn't work. So when you get to the point where the radicals isolate it, the other side's negative, say, no, real number solution. And that's the real number symbol, or you can write it out. Which sometimes they'll say null set, right? No solution, no answer, no real number solution. Doesn't work. Be careful. You gotta wait until your variable to the radical is isolated before you can tell. So on B, you're gonna move the seven first, correct? And when you do, the other side is going to become a twelve, right? Seven and five is twelve. <laughs> That's okay. And now when I move the negative 5, I get the square root of 2x plus 3 equals negative 12 fifths. Yes. You have a different number? Uh -oh. oh, no wonder. 
What do you have? A four where? Okay. All right. We'll do yours then. So that makes it a nice round number. So this would be negative three. It doesn't matter if it was a fraction. It doesn't matter if it's a whole number or an integer. It doesn't matter. All right. So see that negative? Are you going to do any more? Are you going to waste any more time on this problem? No. No real solution. By the way, can the number on the right start out negative, and by the time you isolate the radical, it end up being positive? Oh. Yeah, and therefore you keep going. So don't just automatically look and say, oh, the number on the other side is negative. This one, no, no, not until you isolate the radical. Isolate the radical. All right, usually you guys do well with these. Just pay attention to a couple of nuances. You should be fine. They're not hard. And so, um, do you guys have page 472 in your notes? Is that yep. correct? Yes. Yep. Oh, it was the Algebra 2 class that has the wrong page number. Yeah. All right.